Wow, Allahu Akbar. This yes. is like unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I wonder, you know, how many of them when they come back, <laughs> they stay good. <laughs> 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 they stop being aggressive, <laughs> and this is literally uh, any, you know. Our guest this week is someone that needs no introduction, uh, Ustad Imam Sheikh Bajur uh, from the famous Epic Masjid. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And I really it's my appreciate honor to you. be here. Thank you for inviting me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They say that the dua is the weapon of the believer, uh, the, the tool, the biggest tool that a believer has. And as you mentioned, Gaza and Palestine and all of us have been making dua all around the world. Uh, and it's been a month still and tens of thousands of Palestinians, innocent civilians have died. Um, why do you, many pe on many people's mind right now is why isn't Allah answering our duas? Very good. Uh, first of all, what are the signs that the dua is being answered, right? Allah said, Ud'uni astajib lakum inni qareeb thas'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wat ad So anytime the dua is mentioned in the Quran, the word I answer comes right after it. Not I heard, I answer. He did not say, asma'u du'a'akum. No, no. I answer. So the dua is answered. Now Rasulullah told us that there are three ways the dua is answered. Number one, like for example, Ya Allah bless me with uh, good health. Either you can get it right away or something evil was meant to happen to you. It will be diverted or it will be saved to you on the day of judgment. This is the way that the dua is answered. Win, win, win situation. Right? It's all win. Whether it's happened, whether it's something evil was saved, or it's saved to the day of judgment. It's probably the best thing. Right? So now when it came to Gaza and people all over the world are making dua. There are conditions for a dua to be answered. One of them just like we say, you know, if I get up, if I get up, and I pray two rakah, and in these two rakahs, subhanallah, I read the whole Quran. The whole Quran. I had no wudu. <laughs> Does it matter how much Quran I read, how long were the two rakahs? No. <laughs> so there are conditions just like there are conditions for the salat, huh? there are conditions for the du'a. One of the du one of the conditions, or if, let's mention them since everybody's really interested in, in this. <clears throat> First, the cleaner you are, the higher the possibility of the du'a being answered. What does cleaner mean? That means the less major sins, not minor sins, me and you, we all commit minor sins. But the less major sins, there should be no major sins, no riba, no alcohol, no drugs, no lying, no cheating, no, you know, the adultery, no gambling, no, no, the major ones. This should be a way. So when I raise my hands and I beg, I have something, you know, when I go to the ATM machine, and I put my, the card, I have something in there to withdraw. If there was nothing in there, and I keep pressing till the day of judgment, nothing's gonna come out. What's my asset? What, what did I put in there? What did I, what did I invest with Allah Azza wa Jal? The riba that you're up to here with, and then you're raising your hand, you declared war on Allah. Allah said, you're declaring war on me with riba. And then at night you're raising your hand, you say, Ya Allah, help me. Are you, are you, are you making any sense? Riba's interest. Riba's interest. You're, you're dealing with interest. And Allah said, if you deal with interest, then you are declaring war. Imagine I declare war on you. And then I say, can you please give me $20? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you declared war on me. You, are, you, are, you spread rumors against me. You're, you never listen to me. Subhanallah. So you're serious. If you are serious about doing making dua to Gaza, 
quit that haram job. Quit drinking alcohol. Quit smoking. You see, like I mentioned, <laughs> people want to hear the easy way out. What should we do for Gaza? Make dua. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> ya Rabbi. Done. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm making dua. No. No. You really want to have an impact? You really want your dua to be answered? Quit that haram. You can. You can quit that haram. You can stop this riba, this interest that you're dealing with. Quit. Do something. Show that, you know what? They are losing their life and their properties and their wealth and everything they have. I cannot lose a job and Allah will definitely replace me with something better because I only left it for the sake of Allah. This is where, you know, this whole thing that's happening is a sifting. You know the sifting? This is sifting to know who is the true believer from the fake one. Even if you are, alhamdulillah, I mean, like many of the people watching us, they don't have major sins. Allahu Akbar, great. You want to make dua? Okay, get your phone out. Put alarm at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Not when the dua is convenient for you. Get up at 3 a.m. when Allah is asking, what do you want so I can give you? And let him see you at that time with your eyes crying out, bleeding, your heart is bleeding, and begging, Ya Allah, my brothers and sisters in Gaza. That is the dua that we're talking about. Make an effort for that dua. Make an effort for that dua. Not when it's convenient. After I finish my salat, I raise my hand. Alhamdulillah, I'm not telling you that's bad. or No, no, no. no. But I want to feel like I did something. I did something I, out of the ordinary. That dua that you make after salat or whenever, you always do it. But when was the last time you actually put an alarm to get up and perform tahajjud, praying at night, just to make a dua for something that you really know because you know that this is the best time. Rasulullah said, the dua, the thulthul akhir, the dua at the last, the last third of the night. That's the best dua. And I want to make dua and I really, I'm really suffering and I feel so helpless and I really want to help my brothers and support them uh, and sisters in Gaza. Show me, Habibi. Get up. Not show me. Show Allah. Get up in the middle of the night and do something out of the ordinary. Not just in my regular schedule. Okay, yalla, let's make dua. Allah akbar. Allahumma. No, that's good. Alhamdulillah. I'm not telling you again. I don't want to say because like we said before, the dua is very, very powerful. But like Ibn al-Qayyim said, he said, it is the strongest weapon. But the weapon depends on the hand that's holding it. If the hand is very strong and the weapon is weak, it cannot do much damage. And if the weapon is very strong, the sharpest sword ever, and the hand is weak, Allahumma Rabbana, you know, well, I was looking at the left or right and checking my phone. Nothing. It depends on the person who's holding it. Where is that dua coming from? Yeah. It's coming from here or just from here? Is it coming from from a, a, a heart that is really looking at these pictures and saying, this is my niece, this is my nephew? You know, when I look at that kid and I say, this is my nephew, the dua changes. When I look at that, at that brother and say, this is my blood brother, he lost everything. How can I enjoy all these things while him, he's suffering so much? The least I can do is get up in the middle of the night and do this dua. So dua is very powerful. And one more point before we... <clears throat> so Rasulullah told us that haram income is a barrier between you and your dua being answered. And the example of the man in the desert, he raised his hands, he is a traveler, dua of the traveler is answered, he's in dire need, the dua of the person in dire need is answered, he's hungry, he's tired, he's exhausted, but Rasulullah said, his income is haram, his food is haram, his drinks are haram, he's clothed with haram. How can he be answered? So haram income, you're serious about? So you imagine I'm making, I know this hadith, and I'm making dua all the time, and I know that this is a barrier. So what did I do? Do something, number one. Number two, Rasulullah said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ He swore by Allah, either you order good, and forbid evil, 
or you're going to raise your hands and keep making dua, keep making dua, and your dua will not be answered. That's another big problem that not only our community, the whole ummah is facing. We stopped. We stopped, or maybe we are so behind in ordering good and forbidding evil. You know, Arabi, look at the word used. Ya'murun. Ya'murun bil ma'ruf. Command, order good. Now we have families that they cannot even order good to their own daughters, to their own sons, to their own spouses. They cannot implement Islam in their own five, six members of a household. Hmm. So this is another barrier when we stop ordering good and forbidding evil. It's from Rasulullah 100% not from me. Yeah. He said, you, if you stop doing that, then you will make a lot of dua, but your dua is not being answered. SubhanAllah, your sentiment is, is very close yeah. to the sentiment of that Allah will not change the matters of a people unless they change what's within themselves. Barakallah feek. you just concluded everything. لا يغير الله إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم الله does not change the situation until you show the change show me يا أخي show show Allah that you're really really crying there are brothers and sisters alhamdulillah Allahi they're working very hard to the best of their ability just like you and the brothers here trying to do something whether they're in social media whether I, I, uh, some brothers yesterday they contacted me they want to put a huge ad on daily news take the whole page and support Palestine. So they're trying, the people are really trying. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept from everyone. So what would you say then? Is Allah upset with us? Is Allah mad, mad at us as, as the Muslim Ummah? When we say, Allah said in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُطْعِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ If you obey the messenger, you have obeyed Allah. So clearly, Rasulullah said, these two things are a huge barrier, major sins, haram income, and not ordering good and forbidding evil, they are barriers. He told us, just like he told me, uh, say Bismillah before you eat. Just like he told me, you need to do tawaf seven times. He told me that these are barriers of dua, so why I'm not listening? But surely there's millions, within those millions of Muslims that are making dua across around the world, there are people that meet your criteria. Excellent, not my criteria, the criteria. Sorry. That, yeah. uh, there are 100%. Now we come to the next level. What is victory? What is victory? To the mass, to the majority of the people, they want to see that, you know, Israel is gone and Gaza is superior. And this is what they define victory. This is part of the victory. But Victory in Islam, number one, number one, it only comes وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory is only, only from Allah. Not if uh, this country supported us, we will have victory. If they opened that border, we will have victory. No, no, the victory is only from Allah Azza wa Jal. So I have to please the one who owns the victory, right? In the story of the people of al ukhdud in Surah Al-Buruj, Allah said, uh, very briefly, Allah said that the king got all the villagers around the ditch and the ditch was full of fire. And he told the villagers, believe in me as your Lord. They say, no, la ilaha illallah, push into the fire. One by one, pushed into the fire, dead, burned. The last person was a mother holding her baby. When she looked at the baby, looks like she was reluctant. She hesitated for a second. And Allah made the baby speak. He's one of the four babies that spoke in the cradle. And he said, Ya umma, asbari fa innaki ala al-haq. Oh mother, be patient. You are on the truth. And she jumped. Now, to me and you and to many people, they look at this incident. What's wrong with them? What did they benefit? They all died. They could have lied and said, we believe in you, but their heart is attached to Allah and raised Muslims that will uh, convey this message in the future. What's wrong? What did we benefit from them all dying? Right? This is what logically it says. Allah called their action in that surah, Al-Fawzul Kabir, the ultimate victory. Hmm. 
<laughs> so, Gaza already won. They got the ultimate victory. They have reached a level that we beg to reach. They have already won the war. What is victory? We go back to the question. Victory is for me and you, inshallah, to die without any speck of doubt in our heart about Allah, His Messenger, and our deen. That is victory. Victory is to die with your tongue uttering, La ilaha illallah. And this is happening to our brothers. Victory is to die as a shaheed. That is the most honorable death. We have only have one death. Let's make it honorable. You know? So they ready. As a matter of fact, Rahim recorded me saying, having a lecture, and I'm sure you're not going to put this on your... <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it says Gaza 1. And it was forbidden to be broadcasted because <laughs> it was very dangerous. No. <laughs> so... Uh, <clears throat> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So we have to understand what does victory mean? You know, they supposed to make dua for us. Wallahi. They are the ones because we all believe that this dunya is nothing. The akhirah is the ultimate success. And look, they did not get the akhirah. They get the best, the VIP position in the akhirah. So who's the one who's <laughs> who should make dua for who? <laughs> SubhanAllah. You know, your words remind me of a, a Russian, I think it was a Russian agent. <coughs> speaking about Afghanistan after the war between Russia and Afghanistan. And he said, how can you defeat an enemy who looks into the scope of a barrel, into the barrel of a gun and sees paradise? Allahu Akbar, <laughs> whom, whom the wish is to die. Yeah. <laughs> how can you fight someone who is, because when you scare somebody, what do you tell them? I'm going to kill you. Oh, really? Yallah. <laughs> <laughs> And I think Abu Bakr also said a similar <coughs> sentiment when after, I believe, Uhud or one of the battles uh, where someone was mocking the Muslims and the death of the Muslims. And he said, our dead are in heaven and your dead. Omar radiallahu anhu. And this is exactly what I said in the khutbah. You know, their deceased are shuhada, they are in heaven. And the others are in the hellfire. Their wounded are rewarded immensely. And the people who are fighting Rasulullah said, uh, uh, Rahim just made a, uh, a shorts from it. Rasulullah said, Mawqif sa'a, a short period of time that you stay defending your deen, defending your brothers, fighting the enemy, is better than performing Laylat al Qadr next to the Black Stone, Hajar al Aswad. Subhanallah. I guess your answer to my question would be then that Allah is answering our du'as. Allah is answering, and this, and I think <coughs> the people are surviving and are having a lot of patience because of our du'a and their du'a. So we have to continue making the du'a and ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings. Don't stop the du'a at all. Even if you feel that you're guilty and you don't have that. Uh, uh, power to you know to make a move or something keep begging Allah to help you first because at the end of the day كل نفس بما كسبت رهينة everyone is responsible for their own actions ask Allah to to bless you and make you closer to Him and at the same time beg Allah to help our brothers and sisters don't ever give up on the dua literally right now we are in a state with the situation that we are in literally that's all we have yeah. <laughs> And I think your sentiment was very important when you mentioned that what we need to make jihad over, our internal struggle. Do something, to, to, do, do something. Yani, I'll, I'll give you a good example. What would you say to someone who's raising his hands and crying and saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, cure me. He's making dua for Allah to cure him. And then after he finished his dua, you came to him and said, uh, so what's wrong with you? Said Allah, I have a tumor in my brain. Did you see any doctors? No. Did you take any medicine? No. So, did you do anything? No. I'm just making dua. <laughs> so what do you say to that guy? So similarly, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya... What are you doing? Imagine someone saying, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb, Ya Allah, bless me with a baby boy. Ya Rabb. So you go, Alhamdulillah, show brother, when did you get married? No, I'm not married. You have a, 
wife, anything? No. So I heard you asking for a boy. How is that going to happen? Go get married. Yeah. <laughs> Do something. So you were just you were just telling me about your trip to Umrah and, yeah. and having an experience that, that you've never had before. Can you tell me a little bit about your trip to Umrah this year? So, Alhamdulillah, um, first of all, there's a joke. You know? When I planned this Umrah, <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm going to have an Umrah off-season. No Thanksgiving, no Christmas, no Easter, no nothing. October. Nobody's. So this way, we go and enjoy our Umrah. What a joke. <laughs> There's Why? nothing called off-season in Umrah. <laughs> it's 365, <laughs> 24 hours. You know, one of the guys who were with us in the Umrah, he said, I thought that New York is the city that doesn't sleep. This is the city that doesn't sleep. Literally, this is the city that does not sleep. This is the city that does not sleep. 24 hours packed, packed 24 hours. Maybe in New York towards Fajr time, maybe it slows down. Here, no. Amazing, amazing, blessed, sacred place, subhanAllah. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, we went uh, to a group of around 50, 50 something people. And uh, it was, uh, subhanAllah, you know, it was uh, all my, all my life when I go to Umrah or to Hajj, the plan is to go after and visit my parents in Beirut. This is the first time ever I went to visit them before. And subhanAllah, after the Umrah, I uh, noticed the hikmah, the wisdom. If I waited to go after, there was no after. Because you know what happened in the region. My parents said, don't even think <laughs> of coming. So if I went, because I left on, uh, on uh, uh, October 1st, and this happened on October 7th, and I was in Beirut when it happened, and I was watching the whole thing from the other side of the story, not what the US is watching, subhanAllah. So, and October 8th, our Umrah started. So if I waited to go after, you know, Lebanon is on the border, and uh, there was a lot of threats that, you know, Lebanon is next. So it was an impossible to go. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that I went before and I saw my parents and my siblings. And uh, the Umrah in general was, uh, SubhanAllah, as usual, amazing. No matter how crowded it is, no matter how, what you experience there, the minute you leave, you want to go back. This is, this is Umrah. This is Mecca. You know, this is Medina. This is the feeling that you always have uh, when you visit. And... Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, we noticed that the power of social media, that everywhere you go, people stop you and uh, ask you, are you from Epic, you're Stas Bajur, and uh, Germany, uh, yeah, how was that? Tajikistan. <laughs> so this, this was your first Omra since COVID, and Epic really picked up during COVID, because yes. everyone was inside, as you were telling me. Yes. And so this was your first Omra there, and you... You're saying that there was so many people that came up to you. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, you know, the pictures that we took with the people, I was very happy that, you know, because you notice that when someone is recognizing you, that means he's from the people of Dean, hmm. right? He's watching. Not everybody's going to be, not everybody who goes to Umrah is really also educating themselves regularly. You know, they just go to Umrah, but whoever is really recognized, the speakers from the US or or or, uh, or uh, England that means these people are also into the deen so alhamdulillah that that give me joy that all these youngsters they are most of them are very young and you know you know how how touching it is when someone comes to you and tells you that you changed my life you know what does that mean you know you tell yourself what did i do for allah to give me this honor that i am i'm a, I'm a poor <laughs> you know sinful slave of allah azza wa and a person from, I have no clue who they are, they say that you changed my life, you know? SubhanAllah, that is as if they say, like they say it's, a, <laughs> you get paid. <laughs> yeah. How, how does that make you feel? Oh, SubhanAllah. It, it humbles you so much and it makes you so grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. And um, you, you beg Allah to accept and uh, you beg Allah to, the most important thing, to give you sincerity. Because without sincerity, you know, uh, all that is multiplied by zero. Mm -hmm. 
that is that is the most uh, the scariest thing ever is that um, to go on the day of judgment and find out that you were fake and you were just doing it to have uh, uh, likes and you're doing it to have uh, followers and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen rahim knows uh, i have no social media whatsoever. yeah you don't <laughs> so, try to find and uh, like, the, like the youth telling me you are so big sheikh on tiktok <laughs> I don't have TikTok. Oh, what about Instagram? You on Instagram? I see you all the time. I don't have Instagram either. <laughs> There's somebody I told you that they started a channel with uh, with with all my vi- all my videos, and I don't know who that person is. And millions of views, millions, millions. <laughs> really, <laughs> millions. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy that they, you know, they're doing the work, and uh, inshallah, inshallah, me and them are getting all this hasanat. Be And Subhanallah, without you having any social media, no Twitter, no, nothing, nothing. Subhanallah, look how Allah took your words <laughs> and threw Allahi, another person's Allahi, hands. I don't see anything except tawfiq from Allah Azza wa Jal, because I don't see anything. I mean, I'm, all I'm saying is no new hadith, no new ayah. <laughs> Everything I'm saying is everybody says the same thing, but this is only from Allah Azza wa Jalla Tawfiq. Wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. And you were telling me about yesterday, <laughs> Qadi sent you a video. Uh, today, Can you pull up that video real quick? <laughs> today, uh, Sheikh Yasser, may Allah you know, bless him, he texted me, he said, Sheikh, uh, let me read you the. Rahim, check out this video, man. So, <laughs> so you're, big in, you're big in Russia. He said, uh, "Mashallah, you are famous in Russia now." And then he texted me uh, a text with a video of a person, and then he said, "Allahumma barik." Uh, and this uh, video, <laughs> where's the uh, camera? <laughs> so, Stas uh, Bajur is uh, being translated to Turkish uh, to uh, Russian. <laughs> You said there's one that they actually like uh, played over it. Yeah, yeah, they, they actually. I'm I'm speaking that language. Uh, some, uh, uh, some. Uh, I think it was Indonesian or Turkish, and I'm actually speaking Turkish. It was so funny to see yourself speaking a different language. Yeah, <laughs> how they do that AI or something? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. Oh, and Rahim the, found it. Right technology. Here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which language is this one? This uh-huh. is Russian. Russian. This is the Russian one? <laughs> yeah, I think we, we sent before uh, Indonesian one. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indonesian and French. And yeah. This is this is a huge blessing. And all, subhanAllah, yani, inshallah, it will go to uh, Rahim and Basir and Samir, all the brothers who helped. Because, you know, they are the ones uh, I have no clue how to do all these things. And look at this now. Everybody's talking, taking our, our product and developing it and spreading it. SubhanAllah, what a, what a blessing. Why why us? Why not uh, any other? You know, it's not we are not the only masjid. Yeah. So there must be something in that masjid, <laughs> someone in that masjid that made dua of barakah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all this spread, you know. You're in the field. I mean, uh, why? <laughs> SubhanAllah. And that, that is something I always talk to Rahim about, which is that epic masjid, there's something special about it. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. And you guys are the, your processes the way you implement things, the way you guys go about different stages and levels of development. What's the key ingredient here? How can other Muslim communities learn from this? And can you believe when you tell, when people ask me and I say, this is all volunteer, the, what? So you don't have like that fancy schmancy studio with all these machines. <laughs> Habibi, <laughs> sometimes we started with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and Rahim with his cameras and all that Basir and all that. Subhanallah, so, Allah, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Again, first of all, always tawfiq is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Second of all, uh, it looks like we targeted what people are going through and they found out that the content is not just talk. And especially when it comes to me, one of the one of the lines that I hear all the time, Sheikh, you are to the point. Yeah. You don't, you know, half an hour. No, no, to the point, straight. This is the message I have. Boom, finished, done. And Alhamdulillah, the other speakers also, Mashallah, in our in our uh, masjid. So Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, uh, yani, uh, the audience is relating to the content, and they're feeling that they are. Uh, cl- getting closer to Allah, plus they're getting uh, more informed about their deen. Mm. 
And I heard that you originally started off in New York. That's actually where you spent most of your career. Uh, what, what was it, what <laughs> okay. was it like there? So how a lot. It's a, it's a long story. Let me see if I can give you the short version. Um, I'm a businessman all my life. Retail stores, export import companies from New York to Congo in Africa. Uh, retail was general merchandise. And uh, uh, I was not, unfortunately, I was not close to the dean at all. I was a Friday guy. I was a Juma man. And uh, how old were you then? Uh, I would say 27, 26, up to that age, 28, maybe. I was just a Juma guy. And then, subhanAllah, that, you know, that uh, side note, you know, when someone stands on the member and say, if you only pray Juma, don't ever come to the masjid, this guy have no clue what he's doing. He has no clue what he's saying. I'm the Juma guy and I came and one Juma changed my life. And now my office is in the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, I started getting close to the deen and still operating all my businesses, taking care of my family. And for around uh, uh, from two th 14 years in New York, doing da'wah to all over New York for free, not a penny. And another six years, uh, 20 years, not a, not a penny for da'wah. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Amin, I, have, uh, I was sufficient in, you know, financially. Uh, and uh, I, 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 there was a period of time that I had 10 halaqahs a week in different masajid in, in New York. And Allah put barakah in them, alhamdulillah Rabbi Amin, some of them are still running till now. Uh, and my two boys heard about Sheikh uh, Abdul Karim in uh, Irving and they wanted to come and study with him. And that was the reason we moved to, uh, to move to Dallas. I have, I've never, this is my first job ever. This is my first job ever. <laughs> and, uh, your first job as an imam. My first job, job ever. I'm always my own businessman all okay. my life. <laughs> uh, so this is my first job ever. And it turned out to be an imam or religious leader, if you want to call it. So uh, you, you you mentioned that there was a Friday prayer that changed your life. What was that Friday? Prayer? That was a, a brother, a Palestinian brother, gave that khutbah. And the ayah that changed my life was when he said, and he reminded us when Allah said, ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب أتيد. and he started explaining it that no word you utter, nothing that you do, except it is recorded. Wow, what? <laughs> Everything? <laughs> that Subhanallah. I mean, how many times you read this ayah? But you know how sometimes. It penetrates and boom, it explodes inside and changes everything. Yeah. And this is exactly what it did to me. That same day, he said, we want to start a, an Arabic halaqa at this masjid. So please, anybody who's interested, who speaks Arabic, please remain after the khutbah. So I said to myself, let me see what kind of, what does these people do? And he sit down for a halaqa and all that. So I sat down and he said, okay, today's Friday. This Thursday coming up, why don't we all meet? So Thursday night came and I went. Uh, he was very smart, the guy leading the halaqa. He said, okay, alhamdulillah, jazakumullah khair for coming. Uh, we're gonna, inshallah ta'ala, uh, you know, just to gather, remind ourselves about Allah Azza wa Jal and about our deen. Uh, we discuss a hadith, a tafsir of an ayah, uh, some fiqh, stuff like that, reading Quran, half an hour, 45 minutes, and uh, once a week, just to keep us close to Allah. And then he looked at me. He said, you, prepare tafsir next week. I said, tafsir? What does tafsir mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's like a hadr, inshallah. 
I went home and I said, what is tafsir? What, what am I going to get tafsir books? I don't know anything about tafsir. I start looking for the masjid. One masjid said, no, you cannot take the book out. I said, please, ya akhi, let me go just copy the pages and all that. Said, Subhanallah. Long story short, <laughs> years went by and the guy left and I became the emir of the halaqa. <laughs> and that halaqa produced another seven, eight halaqas. And... Uh, Subhanallah, look where we are from one word a person said that changed someone's life in, in, the, in the khutbah. And, and why did that impact you so much? You know, when you, are, when you are not connected to Allah Azza wa Jal and you have a good heart, you feel guilty when, someone, when something that you are doing is being mentioned and uh, you are so involved in dunya matters uh, and uh, uh, the, the ayah came as a wake up call how long and you look at this everything is recorded and you might leave at any second so how long is this going to continue but you could have remained you know halaqa leader you could have became you know a sunday school teacher so, something light a little bit of involvement in the community what happened inside you so that now I did not, you. yeah, I did not go gradually from there to no, no, no. It's gradually that halqa. I'm telling you, it stayed from 1999 till 2014, 15 years. After two years only, 2001, I became the emir, and I I start coming close to the dean, close to the dean, close to the dean, and less involved in businesses and all that. Close, and then till 2014, I decided that I sold everything. I decided to dedicate the rest of my life for the dean. And I moved to Dallas. I have no clue about this job or anything. One time, uh, Epic needed a khatib. So the brother, Brother Shigo, may Allah bless him. He's an Umrah now also. Uh, he he know a brother in Arlington. So he told him, do you have any khatib? He said, I heard that there's a new guy in town named Bajur. He's very big in New York. Everybody knows him. Try him. So he said, Can, would you like to come and uh, give a khutbah at Epic? I said, I'm, I'm, I love to. You know, it was the old epic across the street. It was a small epic. <laughs> so I came, gave the khutbah. Literally, right after the khutbah, the board met and said, where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> I said, I, 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 I can do everything for free. They said, no, there's no for free. Either you full-time or not. I've never worked for anybody. I don't know how this thing works. They said, okay, let's try, uh, you know, for six months if you like it. You stay, if we like you, you stay, you know, so we'll see, we we'll trial for six months. And it's almost uh, 10 years now. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at where Epic is Subhanallah. today. Subhanallah. This is all from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. One of the most influential <coughs> masjids in the world today. Subhanallah. Allah, this is all from Allah Azza wa Jal. We are so happy that Allah is using us. So why, why, why do all of this? I mean, sure, you, they, it, Allah led you down this path, but what, what's making you continue? What? what What's your that's reason very, behind all that's this? That's a very good question. The joy. The joy of being in a halaqa. The joy of knowing that you're impacting somebody's life. Not somebody's life he became, all of a sudden he became successful in the dunya. That's great. But to be, to know that Allah used you to change someone's life from maybe he was destined to the hellfire and now you know subhanallah because of a word you said it changed his life and inshallah he will be from the people of jannah that feeling is priceless like i'm telling you when it came to dunya matters you name it i had it whatever people dream about i already did do you think you were, were with all your businesses did you reach millionaire level no, I did not reach million level, but I lived like a millionaire. You know, Lebanese people <laughs> always look like, you know, alhamdulillah. I mean, the, the clothing, the, the cars, uh, the vacations, the house on the water in New York, you know, uh, all of that, alhamdulillah. I mean, so I came from a, you know, I, uh, it's not like I'm hungry for money. I'm hungry for uh, for fame or for anything. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm satisfied, you know, so... Uh, you know, all those joys that, you know, you feel that they are joys of doing this or doing that or subhanAllah. Now the joy is to put me with a group of people and 
tell me teach them something good mm. <laughs> that is uh, maybe maybe people cannot relate but i wish that allah will keep them alive to reach a point that they relate because it's unbelievable feeling yeah. it's priceless I, i've always wondered what does a, a sheikh <laughs> like you a scholar like you uh, think about on a daily basis think about before they sleep first uh, let me clarify one thing i am not a scholar i am not a mufti i am not a sheikh i am just a da'ya to allah to remind people about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i am not qualified to give fatwas i uh, literally i'm a person that doing what rasulullah said convey even if you have one ayah um, uh, you know, so I, I took advantage of that and uh, I used all the tools I have in order to apply this hadith to the best of my ability and then again like I told you Allah put barakah in it mm -hmm. otherwise you know subhanallah uh, you know that's the word uh, scholar is huge and and we know if coming from a Arabic background when you say the word alim <laughs> and to me there are maybe one or two handful on earth <laughs> and I'm definitely 100% not one of them. So, uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what is an Islam like you think about on a, on a daily basis before you sleep? Well, the, with, in, the, in the current situation, not only me, me, you, and everybody we know who has a heart is only thinking about Gaza. Uh, and it, it is, subhanAllah, it is keeping us uh, sleepless and uh, it is, uh, uh, it has revived uh, our Iman, it, it has it has changed so many things. Uh, but before this happened, uh, you know, always, it, it is always on my mind, how can I improve? How can I uh, be able to reach uh, uh, or change someone's life to the better. That is my really my main concern. Even when the uh, series that we start, and may Allah reward Rahim and Basir, that we, we record, all of them are rotating about daily affairs, daily matters that we could all relate to. I'm not going to talk to you about uh, things that you know, happens once in a, in a blue moon, no. We talk about tahajjud, we, we talk about istighfar, we talk about adhkar. And alhamdulillah, I mean, one of the things that went viral all over the world is a dua series. That was like, subhanAllah, because everybody wants you know, to make dua. And that shows you how kind are the people. They want the dua. What is the dua? It's a connection between you and Allah. And the reason why it became viral, it because people really want to get connected. You know, they want connect. They want. Please teach me a dua that will make me this, will make me that, that will improve this, improve that. And Subhanallah, and that shows you that there is a lot of khair in the people. All we have to do is just extract it, take it, and and bring it out. Uh, this is Subhanallah. This is what we always uh, think about. I want to go back to Amr real quick, okay, and, and get your reflections on, on that because. Uh, Speaking of Amra, whenever you want to flip that, just let me know. Ah, I was thought, okay, I should have flipped it 20 minutes ago. It's oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Amra is, a, is something that, that I, I find to be a fascinating concept. I've always wondered, like, why is it that we're circling around a black, <clears throat> a black box? Uh, this seems very... <laughs> faith-oriented, mindless in a way. It, it doesn't seem like there's any logic behind it. SubhanAllah. You know, Umrah, or your question could be better if you asked it about Hajj. Because Hajj is a must, Umrah is an option, right? Right. So why do we go to Hajj every single, you know, why do we, why, why is Hajj prescribed and not only prescribed, it's one of the pillars. There's only five pillars. Pillars, Jenny. Without one pillar, the whole thing will collapse. It's a pillar of the deen. And millions of Muslims die without performing it, and they're not sinful. And it's a pillar of the deen. And even if you perform it, it takes two weeks of your lifespan. How can someone, how can something that take two weeks of my lifespan is a pillar, not a sunnah, it's a pillar of the deen, right? Yeah. So there must be something because the one who prescribed it is the all wise himself. There has to be something.
So this is an, a long topic, but just let me answer one one of your questions. There has to be a lot of lessons. <clears throat> one of the reasons is that Hajj or Umrah, it teaches us the concept of Sama'na wa Atana. We listen and we obey. <clears throat> Why Arafah is on the 9th, not on the 10th? Sami'na wa ata'na. We listen and we obey. Why the tawaf is seven times, not nine? Sami'na wa ata'na. We listen and we obey. Why in Muzdalif I'm picking up a stone and I'm going to throw it at another stone and if I'm lucky, I will kiss a stone and I will make a rounds around the stone. Yeah. We listen and we obey. So when you come back to your country and you know that selling alcohol is haram, you would say, Sami'na wa atana. Oh, these are non Muslims. I'm not drinking it myself. I'm just selling it. It is haram. Stop. I listen and I obey. So this is a practice, this is a training to know and to implement in your life, I listen and I obey. Mm. SubhanAllah. Now, Ustaz Baju, just to, to finish off the segment, uh, if, if Allah, inshaAllah, bi'iznillah, ameen, grants you Jannah one day, uh, other than meeting the Prophet, peace be upon him, what, what would you like to do there? What are you looking forward to? I want to watch the Battle of Badr live. Really? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> that was the answer of one of my nine years old when I asked the same question. He blew my mind. From a nine year old, he said, I'm going to ask Allah for a, a, a movie theater screen, huge, and I want to sit back with some popcorn and watch the Battle of Badr live. And Allah. <laughs> he blew my mind. <laughs> so this kid, I said to my God, oh my, wow. I said to myself, oh my God, what did this guy's imagination go? You know, this shows you that this kid grew up in a in a very good household, you know? Yeah. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me from the people of Jannah, may Allah make us all from the people of Jannah. Mm -hmm. Ameen, Rabban, everybody who's, who's watching us. Wallahi, uh, you know, I... I'm going to be so, so, so speechless that, uh, and probably my question would be, or I would ask for, Ya Allah, what is that deed that I did that got me here? Because it's at the end of the day, it's, it's a deed that you did. One, like, you know, they say there was uh, Arun Rashid, he had a wife, her name was Zubaydah. Zubaydah was very, very, very generous. And at her time, she provided water to the people of Mina who are performing Hajj. You could imagine for them to make wudu, to, to wash, to, to cook, to, to shower, to everything. So you could imagine the, the, the reward of providing water. Water is the best thing, like Rasulullah said, the best charity is water. And she's providing it to the Hajjaj years and years ago when there was no taps and no you know barrels of water nothing it was like an amazing project so she died one of her best friends saw her in the dream and she said where, where are you now what did allah do to you she said alhamdulillah i'm in jannah so the best friend said because of the water that you did to mina right you get to the people of mina she said no it was two simple rakahs in the middle of the night. What? Did she say why? So Allah didn't accept? No, 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 it's not, it's not about that. No, no, the point is, it's not about how huge is the amal. It's about where it's coming from. So that amal was huge and it could, it, 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 absolutely, it got a lot of uh, hasanat accumulated in her scale. But you know, it depends how sincere was the amal. Maybe those two rak'ahs, you know, were strictly, that's what we spoke before, strictly for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla. There was no 0.1% showing off. Qiyam is alone. How are you going to show off? Mm -hmm. You know? So 
that I would love to know, you know, human beings curious, what was that amal if Allah got me and the people of Jannah, what is that amal that I did that was, you know, accepted by him? Inshallah. May, the, Allah, may Allah grant you with hundreds of amen. Me and you and all of us, inshallah. Amen. Ustaz Bajur, thank you so much for joining the podcast. I hope you enjoyed your time. Wallahi, I know I, we did. I loved it so much and uh, I love the environment and I love your spirit and all the brothers here, inshallah. May Allah bless you and my advice to you always, always before you start any any podcast, any any recording, anything, purify your intention and tell Ya Allah, please, I beg you, make this amal only for your sake. Even if one person watched, five million watched, Ya Allah, to me, it's the same. Ya Allah, put barakah in it. Ya Allah, make it go just like it went from our hearts here. Ya Allah, make it from our hearts to everybody who's watching's heart. Ya Allah, make it a reason for us to enter Jannah. You know, mm. and uh, Allah's uh, Kareem. Zakhlaq here for having me. Allah bless you and protect you, Habibi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.